So here it's some technologies that uh, we are using. I will just speak about the ones that I, uh, are related to performance. So first of all, Cassandra, which is a NoSQL uh, database that allows you to have uh, requests that go very fast, around uh, 10 milliseconds, and that helps you uh, to build a very, very fast website. Uh, we use it more for personalization because we have a big amount of data, but for me it was really important to be involved and to be sure that the personalization uh, service uh, was not uh, decreasing the performance. And so with uh, Cassandra, we ensure that. And also tracking with Kafka, we are sure that we publish messages really, very really fast. So it doesn't uh, reduce the, the performance. Redis for the distribute kit, distributed cache. Well, you, I think you know it because it's, it has been on the market for a while. And after this, the Elastic Stack we are not only using it for the search engine, but we are only also using it in order to gather all the logs, all the response time of our request. And uh, for instance, uh, in performance, it's really important the redirect, the HTTP code 302. So here we can see uh, where are coming from our redirect and stuff like that. And as you know, uh, also Chrome is moving uh, its policy about uh, security. So if you don't have HTTPS on your website on the 31 of January, you will have a very big, ugly, and fat, uh, not secure website around your, close to your URL. So with that, we are able to track all the HTTP requests coming from our website in order to, to be able to spot them and to redirect them to an HTTPS. Uh, after uh, this part, the three, are more or less a bundle that we have to put together in order to have con continuous delivery. And I really like this one, SonarCube, that now you can run. We, we will speak a little bit about Docker here because Docker is making our life so much easier for tools that are not for production. You don't have even to, to be sure that it's stable and stuff like that. And SonarCube is really impressive because it's uh, checking the code and you can add some rules about performance in order to be sure that all the code that will be delivered in your platform will be performing well. For instance, checking if someone is doing a SQL request inside of uh, Forage, removing the obligation of, uh, of code and stuff like that. So with that, you can have a first uh, barrier to the code that is going in live that could reduce the performance. And after, uh, here we are speaking purely and deeply about performance. Uh, Gmeter, it's in order to do some load tests but now we are using Octoperf. So I don't know who here uh, are doing a lot of tests on their website. Yeah, you? Okay. So uh, what is it useful to do a lot of tests? Uh, first, we use it in two phases. The first one in uh, the staging environment. We do a stress test, and after we do another stress test. And after, with App Dynamics, we are able to compare the performance about two time range. And we, so as the, te the stress tests are the same, we, we are able to say, okay, for the same amount of, of requests, the performance decreases, the number of fixation increases, stuff like that, and say, okay, no for this release, we spotted a bottleneck just right there. Right there. So this is, this is really important to be able to spot the performance issue before going live, because when it's live, it's already too late and you, you lost some revenue. And after, uh, so this is for the performance about your backend handling the load. After, you have also the synthetics. So this is you doing some requests to your website from one location in order to check how your website is behaving. Uh, this is, for instance, in App Dynamics, we are doing scenarios. We are browsing the website, going on the home page, choosing one category, one another category, going to a product, adding it to the cart, and after we say, okay, this is the tunnel to buy something. And we want to be sure that this can be achieved in less than 16 seconds. And this is really important. And after you have the real user monitoring, which is about real user, you track them, uh, inserting, for instance, the app dynamics or the Google Analytics part, and you are able to track the real behavior of people. This is really important, for instance, for Brazil, Brazil where they don't have the same network that we do. And after, actually, SeedSpeed.io, that allows you to have uh, an analysis of each page of your website, and this is really important. Any questions so far? Yeah? How does this work with uh, single-page apps? 
Okay, so this is one issue that I had with uh, CSPDIO. <coughs> so with single page app, uh, through App Dynamics, you are able to tag them. Uh, actually, if you want to, if you do, doesn't have any uh, APM right now, uh, I will redirect you to New Relic that had implemented in the last uh, update uh, one part of the real user monitoring only for one uh, single page app. It, we were using uh, New Relic before, it's why, it, uh, why I know that. Uh, actually, with App Dynamics, you don't have uh, this level. You have to to code some uh, calls to the API saying on which, which page you are on. And you can do the same thing for Google Analytics. Yep. What is this thing with the logo with no letters? This one yeah. is uh, Silex. It's a framework, a PHP framework to do some APIs. I don't know if you are interested in PHP. Which language do you use? Python, JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, any other questions? No? So we continue. So I really like uh, this uh, sentence, and actually, uh, it's what I try to do uh, every time I try to improve something in the web, because you want to know if the thing that you change had an impact or not on the website. After, it's not related to the presentation, but after I can show you uh, an example of some things that I measured, and that we see the effect, and it's really radical. So what you can measure, you can optimize. So this is a, a sentence from Ilya Gurik. If you are very keeping in touch with performance, you might have seen his name, and I really recommend you to follow his Twitter account, where you can find a lot of very, very interesting stuff. So let's go inside of uh, Citpedio right now. Uh, anybody or, uh, have already tried Citpedio? I know that some, some ones, some of you, yeah. Okay, so it was a while ago or it was recently? Okay, so <laughs> I spoke just, just before, uh, I was speaking with some people who tried it and uh, we will speak about it after, but uh, as you can see here, uh, this was when I prepared the presentation one month ago and I'm sure that we have a lot more of contribution and a lot of more of commits because the deliver development pace is really, really amazing. Uh, actually, I had, just before the presentation, I updated all the CSPDIO stuff, so maybe nothing will work. <laughs> we will have a look. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, now it's really much easier to install, and you can have everything set up in less than five minutes. So yes, big community, and it's a set of, of tools. The tool CSPDIO, and after you can use other tools, other plugins. So let's speak first about CSPDIO. Uh, I don't know if you are used to, to play with the web page test. I know that you do. <laughs> uh, but this is more or less some features that we have in web page test. Uh, for now, it's not a full feature. For instance, uh, here you can you, uh, simulate mobile or use real mobile. Uh, you know, you plug your iPhone or your Android on your computer, and after it's the, the real device that is running the test. What is good with that is that you also simulate the hardware. So if you have like a lot of images, you are simulating the graphical device and everything like this. So it's better than a simulation. Uh, only, for now, only supported by uh, Firefox and Chrome. For the real mobile, only Android for now, iPhone is coming very fast. Bandwidth simulation, still better to do it without simulation, but still a feature that we want to have. And this is really important. As it's a non-premise uh, software, you can integrate it into Jenkins, Gulp, uh, and Grunt. So this is really important because you can track the performance of your website uh, in staging environments. Uh, Selenium integration, so you can re uh, use the script that you have with Selenium and update them directly in CTP.io to browse your website. So it's less work to do. And if you don't have any Selenium jobs, Maybe you should have someone, some, or you can just use the crawling function. The crawling function is browsing the page and going through every page. Pages. So it's really fast to do the first configuration. You can just tell uh, CSPDIO to do a crawling of a depth of uh, three, three level, and it will browse all, browse all the pages on your website. And after the third party integration, and it's one of the most important features that we have, because uh, you all know that the API of uh, web page tests sometimes is uh, tricky. 
It's not uh, linking well your analysis to your account and stuff like that. So with uh, web page test, you have the direct integration with uh, web page test. You just have to put your key. And when you run one test for SeedSpeed.io, it will run another one for web page test. The same for Google page Speed Insight. And after, you can also integrate it with Slack in order to put some alerts and stuff like that. And after, you can use custom plugins or plugins. For instance, for an e-commerce website, one timing that is really important is on the, on the listing product. Uh, it's to have the first product displayed. This is one very important time. But it's something that allows you to, to, to say, OK, the customer already have one product and begin to be less frustrated. And after, uh, the different reports that uh, generate uh, SeedSpeed.io, the third one is uh, the one that is a very nice feature. Unitary report, it's more or less what you have when you execute a web page test uh, instance. So here you can have all the history kept on your browser. It's not like a web page test when sometimes they uh, erase all the data that you have uh, um, that are older than six months. You have the coach. The coach is really nice. According to the feature or the information that you retrieve from the analysis, it will tell you uh, how to optimize performance, accessibility for SEO, and bad practices. And this is really nice because it's not saying your website in your website this and 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 this is really terrible. It's a bad website. This thing is saying, OK, you can improve doing that. And you have a big paragrapher. So if you are not used to work with performance, you will learn a lot about it and a lot about issues that you are doing in your website. We'll have an example just after. But it's uh, really helping you to, to see how to improve this and uh, what are the best processes. And after, it's what I really like. It's a historical dashboard. Every test that you do, the, all the information is sent into a database that we will see later. And after, from a client, you can see historically your performance. You can see historically a lot of metrics, like the number of images in your pages, the size of the images, a lot of information. And this is really good when you have some performance decrease. You can track down what happened on your website. And I have an, an example just after. And after, it's multi-pages and multi-websites. So here, we'll, you will see during the demo. But here, you can change the website that you are looking at. You can change the pages that you are looking at. So you can have a custom uh, analysis for your website in Spain and for the home page or for the product list listing page or your web mobile. And you can switch. So it's really nice. Any question? Yep. How does it work with uh, stateful uh, websites? With stateful websites? Can it log in? You will have it in the demo. So as you, you can start a Selenium script before analyzing your website. Okay. And the, so actually, I had an issue with that. I will speak about it during the demo. Uh, because I was not able to clean the cache of the browser. So I had to, to put the cookies directly. I, I will show you just after. And if I, I forget, don't yeah. hesitate to stop me and to remind me uh, the question. Don't hesitate huh, to stop me when I'm speaking, because I'm very talkative. And uh, sometimes it can last long. So stop me as we are not so much. Uh, it will not be an issue. <clears throat> so more or less the architecture about uh, web page test. Uh, here you have your instance of web page, of speed, uh, sorry, I said web page test, it's speed.io. Uh, here you have your speed.io. You tell him to go to test your website. So he's initiating a, a web browser, going into your website, and retrieving all the metrics. And after, he sends all the metrics to Graphit. Just after, he calls uh, the API of Web page Test and the API of uh, Google Page Speed and tells them to analyze your website, the same page. So this is good because you are uh, remotely controlling uh, Web page Test and uh, Google speed, uh, Page Insight. And after, what you do? Uh, if your SeedSpeed.io server is open to the exterior, uh, web page test and Google send a request saying, I have finished. And after you download the report, the report and you send it into Graphit. This will not be shown in the demo because it's only on my local device. And uh, so it's not open to the, to the exterior. 
after uh, the freaky guy go on the, the freaky performance uh, guy go in uh, on his laptop connect to Graphit, uh, Grafana which is a client doing request to Graphit, and you are able to display all the historical information so I will go quickly into the pro and the cons uh, first the pro it's a very quick installation it's made with docker compose you download the um, YAML file you do a Docker, Docker Compose up, and it's already done. You have started all the architecture. Uh, this is a feature that is really cool, and you don't have it in a lot of open source projects. It's the historical data. Normally, uh, it's a feature that is uh, only available in a SaaS platform where you pay. Third so tool integration, so rem remotely using web page test and stuff like that. The dashboard. The performance budget, so this is really important. During the validation of your release, you can uh, put in your configuration a performance budget. Uh, someone wants me to explain what is a performance budget, or you are, you are cool with that? It's, yeah, it's for instance, um, a lot of metrics, a lot of KPIs that you want your website to respect. For instance, you can say, okay, the maximum uh, time on this page has to be uh, three seconds. The maximum number of images that we can have on the website, on one page of the website, is uh, 126. Uh, the maximum number of third parties that we can integrate is uh, 10, which is already a lot. So putting those performance, uh, those uh, performance budgets, you are not the guy saying to the development team, no, 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 you are not putting that in production because I don't want it. You already said like the company. Uh, politic is this. So if you want to add another third party, you have to remove another one. And uh, this is good because you are not the guy going after everybody and saying, yeah, I don't want you to do that. It's the performance budget, and that's all. And it's also automatic during the release validation, so it's not too bad. Uh, a new, feature, new features. Every version uh, build a, add a, a lot of new features. For instance, I had here the the link of uh, the new version that I just released uh, two weeks ago. So I had to update everything for the presentation. Uh, adding a video recording of the page loading. And uh, based on the video, there is a, a tool looking in, your, uh, in the video, the speed index. The speed index is when you begin to have a page more or less uh, fully rendered. That is to say, it analyzes the video and see if uh, you have like every space of the page of the viewport uh, filled with, uh, with stuff. So this is really powerful, um, but I didn't manage to have it work because uh, I had just half an hour before the presentation. <laughs> uh, the cons, there are a lot. It's already young, and uh, you have a lot of breaking changes. And uh, I saw that just before the presentation. Uh, actually. When I did a, the biggest upgrade, it was between the version 3 and the version 4, and I lost all my historic because the data was not compatible. The new version was changing the format of the data. This is uh, a bad thing, a very bad thing. You don't have the compare function. I don't know if you are used to, to play with web page test, but in web page test, you can uh, tag two, two tests and do, it, do a compare, and I really, encourage you to try this because it's really funny. You can generate a video of your website uh, on the 25th of September and now. And you can see how visually your performance improved. You can also have the waterfall view and see what are the new requests that um, slow down your web and stuff like that. So this, should be, this, this could be a very, very nice feature uh, if they can add it. Now it's not fully featured, like uh, you can't plug uh, your iPhone to do real tests with an iPhone. Uh, there are no scheduler for the test, so you have to write a, a script, a bash script, with all the command line with uh, the tests that you want to do, and do it in a cron tab. A little bit ugly, but it's still working. And uh, in the new version of um, Grafana, we will be able to add uh, alerts. That is to say, uh, if uh, your response time is above uh, 10 seconds, you are able to trigger an alert. So this is nice. So now it's time for the demo if you no, have no questions. No. Okay, so I don't know. As we don't have any desk, 
maybe I will do it on, only on my computer, but you just have to configure it, it's really quick. You download this file, you, uh, first you install Docker and Docker Compose. After you download this file, you run this command line, and you are already ready to test your website. After you just have to run this command line, replacing this URL by the URL of your website, and you can access all the data from this dashboard. So I will do a little demo if I find my mouse. So uh, I will do a very risky stuff. Maybe I will mess up the presentation. I close all the dockers. I will be, sh in order to be sure that I'm not uh, telling you lies, I will stop everything. OK, everything is stopped. So now in this file, I have my Docker Compose and after some scripts to do lo the login. And uh, here it's where I generate all my results. This folder is a little bit different. It's what you have to install in order to, to record a video of your website loading. OK, so now let's see if we don't have any demo effect. You start all the dockers. They are mounting special hard drive, special um, location in your drive, so you are not losing any data. OK, so now it's. No errors? No, it seems to be good. Cool. So when you do that, it's running after at all the startup of your computer. You don't have to do anything more. Everything is already settled. So now, let's try to test the website of someone here. Um, can anyone give me a website that you want to test? <laughs> 